How many of you guys watched the Super Bowl last Sunday? Okay. I see a lot of hands raised. How many of you were rooting for the Bengals? Okay. Rams? Okay. That's pretty good. So, why do I bring up the Super Bowl exactly? Well, you know, the Bengals is, and I, and I felt bad for the Bengals. Anyway, back to, sorry. Anyway, I know, I just kind of overloaded all this. But, you know, the Bengals all of a sudden were, were the underdog, obviously. They're a small team. No one was really expecting this all of a sudden to happen. And, you know, when they got in the Super Bowl, sorry. <laughs> uh, when they got in the Super Bowl, um, all of a sudden, I saw all my social media, all these bandwagons. You know what I mean? All those people who were like, bro, I was there from the very beginning. Uh, I was there when it was 1 in the 11. It was, you know, I was like, why are you, you know, you were, you were supporting the Bears, and all of a sudden, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for that to show up. Sorry about that. <laughs> and um, I was like, what's up with all these bandwagons? You know, you were, you were supporting like a team like the Packers or the Bears, but all of a sudden when the Bengals came up, you started supporting for them? I was like, what? See, I bring this up because we're talking about our faith. And not a counterfeit faith. It's make, it, we're talking about making our faith a real one. Not something that happens occasionally or is superficial or is a copy of someone else's. Just how like sport teams have bandwagons, they have their everyday fans. And just how everyday fans are better, as Sunday, just like how an everyday faith is better, no, sorry, just like how everyday fans are better, so is an everyday faith. Sunday faith is good, but a real faith is an everyday faith. Let's pray for our message. Lord, uh, please call my nerves. Please, that uh, although this is my first time speaking, that the Holy Spirit works in through everyone here. And that although uh, I'm a little bit nervous, um, the people get the message and they get the point. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so this brings up a real good question. How do you have an everyday faith when... Sunday hap when Sunday only happens once a week and you get to go to church only once or twice. You see, Sunday faith is a faith in which you sit here in the in the, the blue chairs and you listen to me, you Rich, Scott, or anyone who's speaking at the moment. And it's not necessarily bad. I think the church needs this. The church is this. And it's good to have the body of believers to be together. But there's something more meaningful when you do it every day. See, an everyday faith, on the other hand, is something that, because it's, it's a faith that no matter what day you are on, if it's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's constantly progressing forward closer to God. And yes, it might experience some hiccups along the way, but it's still wanting to get closer to him. It's not, you know, a one-day thing. So what single thing the changes, what single thing makes our Sunday faith an everyday faith? Well, it's pretty simple. It's our habits. Uh, you probably heard a term, you probably have heard the term before. Habits are something that you do unknowingly or just out of habit, as I said before, all the time. And you might sometimes not even know you're doing it in the first place. You see, there are good habits that we have, habits like going to the gym, reading your Bible, well, not, we're gonna go to that, no. It's, it's reading, reading books, listening to podcasts, those are considered good habits. Bad habits, on the other hand, you know, biting your fingers, getting a little bit nervous, Bad habits like you go, you go to sleep at two o'clock and you have to go, to, you gotta wake up to go to school at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Those are all bad habits. But we tend to forget one category that typically a guru wouldn't mention. It's our spiritual habits. You see, spiritual habits 
are not just good, but they pull you closer to God. In fact, spiritual habits are repeated actions that lead us closer to God. Spiritual habits are specifically designed to pull you closer to Him. So, knowing that, do, let me ask you one question. Do you think you have a Sunday faith or an everyday faith? If you text your best friend every single day, after a while, it'll become a habit. You don't think of it in that way, but that's what it is. And you stay connected to that friend. And you know what's going on in his life, and he's helping you, and you're helping him. Well, it's the same thing with God. You see, these are habits that can help you get closer to him. Closer to him. And it can help you build a real faith, not a counterfeit faith. And you're probably sitting there, Solomon, and you're going to say, Solomon, how much are you going to bet that you're going to tell me to uh, listen to God, reading his word, hearing from God, well, that, that is hearing from God, praying to God, talking to God, and third, serving God. I don't know what else you're expecting. That's exactly what I was going to tell you anyway. <laughs> It's, it's pretty simple. There's no quick start solution. Um, as, as I was saying, you know, talk, praying to God is literally talking to him. I don't know how you can get closer than that. Hearing from God, listening to his words, is you're listening to the exact words he's giving to you. And serving God is what you think about it. It is serving him. See, the first time or second time or third time you do it, it might not be effective. You might sit there and you're like, I don't know if this is working. I'm not feeling something. Or Solomon, I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand. What's, what's this in Leviticus? But you see, what seems like work at first becomes incredible over time. Let me give you an example that would apply to this. I decided to go to the gym one day. And when I first started doing it, I was it took forever because I was learning how to do it. And... It was miserable. I didn't like it. My mom was calling me. She's like, Solomon, you're not home at 9 o'clock. And I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm still trying to figure this out. And it took some time, but I got better at it. I got faster. I began to understand the workouts. I began to start loving the workouts just because I worked and practiced on it. And now I, I see the fruits of my labor. All of a sudden now I can jump and I can, you know, hang on the rim. I can't dunk yet, but we're getting there. You know, it's like, whoa, look at this. <sighs> Athletes, performers, artists, you all can understand this. We didn't just get good at a particular path out of nowhere. It took practice. And yes, there are people with, you know, natural talent, but what's good with natural talent if you don't practice? You see, there was a time in my faith when my faith was just that. It was a Sunday faith. A faith where my mom dragged me to church every time. And I had to make the particular decision to, if I'm going to really want this faith, I'm going to have to decide to follow it. And when I made that decision, did all of a sudden my bad habits go and my good habits, my, my, my spiritual habits all of a sudden come out of nowhere? No, it took time, and I'm still working to it to this very day. There's no, you see, there were, you see, there's a lot of like a lot of people in the Bible. Abraham, known as the father of the Jews, he was a sinful man. David was a sinful man. Every biblical character, almost other than Jesus, was sinful. They they didn't have that all of a sudden closeness to God. They practiced it. All right, one more thing. Some of us went to that winter retreat two weeks ago, and I think you can relate with me, that after that retreat, it was pretty hard to keep that level of connection with God. And I think this message would also apply to you. All right, let's open up scripture and see what it has to say about Sunday faith and counterfeit faith. Today, we're in the book of Hebrews 5, um, verse 12 through 14. So, uh, so some, some context behind the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews was a sermon or message written to a Jewish community 
uh, of churches after the death and resurrection of God, uh, of Jesus and God, the same thing. Um, they, uh, it, uh, we don't know who exactly was the author. We, some people think it was Paul. Some people think Paul co-authored it. All we know is it was, uh, it was a very respected leader of that time. And um, let's do some more, like, and that's looking at the book in general. Let's look at the historical context of surrounding the book. Um, I, want you to keep in this, I want you to keep this in mind uh, as we read the passage. The Jewish people at that time were, fo were following what was called the law. It was a, a lot of rules and statues and framework that would make you think about following God narrowly. And it wasn't necessarily bad, but there was one flaw to it. You see, Jesus fulfilled it. And when he fulfilled it, they, don't, they, didn't, want, they didn't need it anymore. You see, because God died and res resurrected for them. And so now... It's, it's just a personal relationship. It does, they don't need the law anymore. Sorry. They didn't need the law anymore. But after some time, after the spread of Christianity at the start, some of the Jews were going back to that law. And the author of Hebrews was completely opposed to this idea. You see... The, what the author was getting at is the law wasn't bad. It was good. But what was more better than that was Jesus himself. And the author wanted, and the author was trying to get at that. So with that in mind, the writer said this. I don't know why I have it right here. I could just read it right after my Bible. I opened and whatever. <laughs> For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need to be teached again the basic principles of of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So, when I first... You like that? <laughs> I gotta stop making this... So basically me and... I know, sorry Rich. <laughs> Tyler was like, bro, I need images because it makes it more fun to look at. I'm like, okay, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to, uh, back to the sermon. So I, I, when I first saw this, I thought milk was the, the simple stuff. I thought the milk was like being kind, respectful, um, you know, maybe memorize a, a single Bible verse too. Or maybe it's like one of those enlightening Christian Instagram posts like, you know, Jesus wept. You know, um, and I thought the, the, the complex things with that, um, I thought solid food was more about, um, solid food was more about the, the, like the deep Bible stuff. I thought it was about the Aramaic, the Greek, the Hebrew behind the Bible. I thought it was like the churchy terms that like have like 20 different characters in them. Like I, it was... That's what I first thought. And then Rich kind of spun it for me. You see, baby faith was an act, it was, it was, it meant more, this passage meant more than that. Baby faith is what is talking about milk. See, it was an imitation of someone else's. It's about needing someone to tell you what to do or needing someone to tell you how, like, put God into you. But, um, but solid food, on the other hand, is one that doesn't need someone to go and tell them what they need to do. They do it. They read the scripture. They pray. And they serve God. All right, let's break this down further. I need uh, Matthew. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> so right here. What if you didn't show up today? What would you do then? I would just grab you. Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, so Matthew, uh, here's the, the illustration. You're going to get the burger. Don't worry. So imagine you and I, Tally, right there, we're sitting, eating dinner out of, out of Wendy's. And... <laughs> I'm talking to you, Tally right now? Shh, Tyler, don't distract me. I already have enough distractions. Okay, so you were, eat, you were gonna about to eat this. And, and you look at me and you said, Solomon... <laughs> I need you to spoon feed me this. 
in front of the tally. Do you see how bad this looks? you see how it doesn't make any sense? That's what the author was getting at. Because he completely understands how to eat this burger. He don't need me to spoon feed it to him, right? I sure hope. <laughs> you can eat that one. That was the point of the illustration. That is what the author was trying to get at. Okay, so you got the point. The point was, we already grown up. We should know how to eat solid food. I sure hope. <laughs> okay, let's break down this verse a little bit more. You see, the author uses constant use. This is, this is exactly what we were talking about beforehand. This is about our habits. It has nothing to do with how much I know in my head. It doesn't have to do with all the verses I memorize. It doesn't have to do with all the good things I'm doing in my life. It has to do about repeatedly practice something. It's about repeatedly practice, practicing something. Scripture said itself, by constant use, you have trained themselves. See, you can perfectly eat this burger because you learn how through <laughs> constantly eating burgers. Just like Jordan, Michael Jordan, practicing his skills for basketball, he did it by, well, you can guess it, playing basketball. When it comes to our faith, we can learn to feed ourselves. The, the author lastly said this, to distinguish good from evil. In other words, over time, by constantly, by constantly using and connecting with God on your own, you become mature. You don't need someone to come up to you and tell you what to do. Not in a mean way, but like you develop the maturity. I can keep, and I'll keep saying this again over and over. Real faith is an everyday faith. Is it always easy? No. Will it sometimes feel like work? Yeah. But that's what all practice is like. Through repeated practice, you and I can learn to feed ourselves. And as we learn to feed ourselves, we develop a greater ability to know what God has for our life. And in, in, in other words, our faith will go from being a copy of someone else's to being something personal in our very own. Okay, Solomon, what does it look like for you to develop daily habits? Well, I think the first thing we need to fundamentally get um, is that it starts by making time to practice feeding ourselves. It, it's, it requires five to 10 minutes of your day or longer than that. Okay, good to know, but well, what do I practice? Well, hearing through God, and I'm gonna have to speed this up. I'm sorry, Rich. You're good. <laughs> um, we can do this by reading the Bible or doing a devotional. It doesn't have to be an hour long. Number two, praying to God. You can pray out loud, in your head, in your car, sitting down, laying down, any way you want to. The point is, is you're talking to God. Um, if you want to head start, read that book. Um, I'm going through it once. It's a phenomenal book. It, I, read, I read it once with the wrong heart. I'm now reading it the second time, and I can't even pass chapter two because I'm scared. That's true, and I'm sad to say that. You'll, if you read it, you'll know why. Okay, so talking about God. Talking about God with your friends, your family, your, your small group leader, your small group friends. Anyone who's Christian, when you work with someone else to work out your faith, maybe you have doubts, maybe you have questions. If you talk to someone, you see, you're thinking about your faith. You're thinking about God. You want to be closer. You want to get deeper with him. Okay, last one's living for God. Living for God, everyday life. You see, when you get to a point in your faith where you realize everything is a blessing, and then no matter what you do, God is with you, and then you can think about that all the time. For If you feel like you need to work on all of these, you don't need to. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying let's focus one at a time. I'm sure if you read the Bible, you're going to get closer, and you're going to be able to work on your prayer next, and it'll be, it'll, it'll be smooth sailing. I, don't, I can't say that. We're, we're Christians. Okay. Uh, okay, I know I said a lot, uh, but there's one thing I want you to fundamentally get. Um, and th and uh, there's a second thing that goes along with it, because I think it's super important. Fundamentally, I want you to understand that a real faith is an everyday faith. 
if that's all you get from this message, I did my job. Um, yeah, and then here's the thing that goes along with it. You see, one thing I kind of shorted out because I was like, oh, I'm running out of time, um, is just talking about making time to spend with him. If you just take five, 10 minutes out of your day, maybe you get home from uh, school and you're like, okay, time to do reading. Maybe you, you're a morning person, I'm not. Um, take five, 10 minutes of your day. I, if you just, if you search with your heart to make time for it, you will find time for it. I know we can be busy sometimes, but just find five to 10 minutes. If you do, God can use it and he will use it and he will change it. All right, you guys can go. Oh, great, all right, sorry. <laughs> Lord, um, I pray that, um, that this message will work on the hearts of these people, Lord. Um, I know you, they, love, they love you and you love them so much, Lord. So I pray that uh, they develop a heart that uh, constantly goes to you and is willing to make uh, their faith an everyday thing. I pray for this small group time that it will be productive and that it will make it uh, be more focused and centered on you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.